Smith Coliseum. David Dodge in the center heads the SEC officiating crew, flanked by Gary Markham and Rusty Herring. LSU with a big lead in the series. Ole Miss, though, has the upper hand here in Oxford. The last meeting was that overtime thriller won by the Rebels as Jackson had 55, Glass 53. Boudreaux, Sims, O'Neill, Williamson, and Jackson facing Glass, Harvell, Murphy, Midlick, and Barr. Murphy against O'Neill on the opening tap. Murphy, 6'11", 225, dwarf, about 7'1", 286, O'Neill. He is impressive. And Sims takes the opening tap, gives it up to Chris Jackson. And Barnes has the defensive assignment. O'Neill shot won't go, and Glass has the game's first rebound. Tommy has a tendency against man to man to throw the ball, not shoot it. Glass can't hit the outside shot, but an offensive board. Glass's second shot goes. <laughs> Ole Miss, man to man. They're going to let the ball go down to the low post and try and help from the wing. O'Neill with a drop step move to the basket. He travels. That looked like a pretty good move. It did to me. Uh, he's come along with that inside post action. But Ed Murphy just felt he could get some help from the forward. You can't help from the guards because Williamson and Jackson are so tough. Some token backcourt pressure from LSU. A little different look. I think Dale Brown's trying to take the action to the opponent, particularly after the Florida game. Trying to keep that tempo mm -hmm. a little more up. Alert. A little more action. A little 2-3 zone. Barnes. He's the most excited guy in the building, by the way, against the 2-3. He is high strung about starting. Getting the start tonight in place of Tim Jumper. His brother Rod was an all-SEC Pretty. Miss. That's Glass off the dish from Midland. What penetration by the little guy. Well, that sets your zone offense up beautifully. Jackson picked up by Midlick on the switch into O'Neal. Everybody traveled two, three times. That time, but great help. Just great help. Something Murph wanted, but anytime you can penetrate against the zone, you get a number situation. Great dish by Midlick and a strong finish. Dale Brown's team has turned it over two of the three possessions, and Stanley Roberts is into the game for the Tigers. Replacing O'Neal, Roberts, seven-foot sophomore from Hopkins, South Carolina, averaging 15 points, second on the team in scoring, and 10 boards a game. Uh, Dale hasn't enjoyed them playing together. They're two big people. A little overload. Boudreaux fouls Gerald Glass. First foul of the game. Overzealous. Even in the zone, though, there was a little more trapping. Very alert right now out of the gate on defense, LSU. A little more enthusiasm for that end of the game. Boudreaux all over Glass. Mm. Well, you were asked the question, how good is Glass? And you see him a lot more than I do. I, I think he's got a lot of potential. I think the NBA teams realize that also, and especially the teams that will be drafting high have beaten the steady path to Oxford this year. Yeah, he, he's got a lot of tools. It, it's just a question of maybe honing them, according to Ed Murphy. He thinks he can get a lot better. And is he that in-between type player? That's the real question. Yeah, I, I think you have to play the two spot. Midlick trying to penetrate, but can't. Shot clock to 15. Nice pass in the teeth of the zone. Glass got it. Well, that, that's what makes him so tough, that ability to play in the middle in traffic and also face up. Last six, Jackson and LSU, nothing. Here's Roberts against Murphy. He got it. Say good night, huh? Strong move. The light body. Dale Brown said he had to lose 25 pounds to, to regain his starting spot. They, they, they've got him with Dr. Broussard, who's their trainer, and he's trained the likes of Bob Pettit, a little older than you, <laughs> Not Jim, much. Jimmy Teller, and even Joe Dean. I said he's the only guy that's failed. Now that is old. Physically. <laughs> Not business-wise. Murphy trapped in the corner, pushed and fouled. It'll be on Boudreaux, and that's his second. Yeah, two silly ones. And Boudreaux will beat a hasty retreat as Vernell Singleton is in to replace him. Singleton, 6'7", sophomore from Natchez, Mississippi, averaging six points and three rebounds a game. A starter at center for the Tigers last year. 
In fact, an all-SEC freshman performer a year ago. And that's why I think people forget this team adjusting to one another, a lot of changes in personnel and position for Dale Brown. Murphy again trapped. Pulling the string. Midlick has it taken away by Jackson. CJ has got Williamson, but it can't get it to him. Now he does. Williamson fires a three and draws nothing but air. I thought Christian had given up a little earlier, though, but he couldn't get control of the dribble. Made it a tougher shot for Williamson. Here's Glass. He can get on some rolls. He's on one now. He is four for four, and Ole Miss back up by six. Box to box, just Roberts. Jackson for three. Way off the mark. And a rebounding foul on Midlick at Ole Miss. That did not look like a typical C.J. shot. No, not at all. And it, it was right on. And it was right on. That last foul on Harvell. And here's Gerald Glass with eight early points to put Ole Miss on top. Eight to two, the Rebels lead it at the 16.09 mark. And we'll be back to Oxford in a moment. Harold Glass, perfect from two-point range, four for four, all the Ole Miss points. Does he have something to prove? Well, he, I, I think he, he's got the ability. We talked about the next level, but more importantly, Ed Murphy just said he's such a solid citizen. And all the NBA guys, that's what they're looking for. I mean, a lot of people criticize the NBA coaches and general managers. They want solid guys. It's a long, tough year. CJ. Short on that one, and Barnes clears it. Tried to out-jump the defender. LSU, just one of its first five, 20% shooting by the Tigers. Here's the extended 2-3, trying to trap a little bit out of it. And Murph wide open can turn and deliver if he gets it. Jackson batted it out of bounds. Ooh. Thought it should have been gold ball, huh? Close call. The quick hands of Chris Jackson. There's Murphy again setting up on an extremely high post to relieve that pressure. And they trap in the corner. I made the mistake of asking Ed Murphy how his son was playing. And he said, great. <laughs> uh, he said he's really been solid and playing within himself. There's a save by Harvell oh. who gets the pass back and lays it in. Nice cut. And once again, Midlick acknowledging Harvell from Gosnell. <laughs> Got to get one of those a night. That is a push on Harvell. A little bit too pumped up, maybe. That's the second foul on Harvell, who made this layup off the pass from Midland. Well, Tom, as you know, you don't stand in the corner. You go create something. And a great cut, and then a terrific dish again by Midlick. LSU having trouble hitting the basket in the early going. And there's a steal. Glass knocks it away. Midlick leads the break and lost it to Williamson. They got the numbers here. Four on one. Jackson missed the layup. See, now I think when they're a good team, Chris will give that off. And it's not that he's unselfish. He's used to beating the guy his whole career. He could have drawn and dumped to the bigger people. Dale Brown said that they didn't want Chris to change his game. There's a walking call on Murphy. They didn't want Chris to change his game because he had better players this season. They wanted him to take charge like he did last year. And Dale was saying before the game, he's just now starting to get him to that mm -hmm. rhythm. They look great against Vegas, I must say. In spurts, as good as anybody. Playing behind, not getting the help. Roberts won't go. Murphy lost it. Who's got it? They'll call a jump ball. It'll be a tie up in the lane, and the possession arrow will be pointing in favor of that man's team, Ed Murphy's Ole Miss Rebel. Uh, usually when a coach is struggling and the team's not playing as well as the people and, and he anticipated, they get a little down on their players. He's not at all. He said the tough December sort of changed everything. We're struggling, but I like my team. And, of course, they have the capabilities of really turning it on this last month. Shooting the basketball has been the Rebel problem. Mm -hmm. Ninth in the conference at 44%, and they lost their confidence early. How about the turnovers of Kentucky as Midlick delivers? Midlick. You're right, 29 turnovers against Kentucky, which was a, a record for futility. Well, Patino can do that to you. You know that. He's been doing it all his career on all levels. 
Ten point lead is the biggest. LSU has two points in the first six minutes plus. Nice look. Sims still won't go. Uh, he shouldn't save it right there. Throw it up in the air high. Wayne Sims cracks the scoring column. Only the fourth point for the Tigers at the 13-35 mark. Uh, Dale trying to do some different things with his club. A lot more extending of the defense, giving different looks. Once again, Murphy able to hop in there. If he can turn and dump to some people, he doesn't have to come out that far either. It's wide open. Barnes, blindside steal. Williamson is one on two, and he'll wait for help. Nice to come to your home state and get the <laughs> recognition. <laughs> the booze from the crowd for Gulfport, Mississippi native Jackson. Now you know how we feel when we get to our house, huh? Yeah. But <laughs> everywhere we go, we hear that. How is that? <laughs> uh, he's got a lot of people in Baton Rouge loving him, though. Harvell wide open, but missed it. And Roberts has it. Nice look here. Singleton reverses it over Murphy. Number Great on the money. That's the area of the floor when they run and Chris gets it to people and Williamson gets it to people that they're just very tough to handle. Tigers on a run now. They're within four. There's the penetration again. Midlick. That's the secret offensively. Whether it's Midlick dribbling, of course, Glass able to do a lot of things as well. Glass with the assist that time. Midlick with his fourth point. 14-8 Rebels. That is a new look, that 1-4. Tough shot. Murphy, though, can't handle it off his leg and out of bounds. And Jackson hasn't been close tonight. Not, not at all. Not at all. Of course, four guys along the baseline letting Chris do his thing. And this is just a great look by Maurice Williamson on the money. And a pretty reverse by Singleton. Time out at the 12-minute mark. Ole Miss on top. We'll be back after a word from Pepsi. It should be a great 1990 SEC tournament. March 8th through the 11th in Orlando, Florida. You can call your local SEC school for tickets or call 407-839-3900. A book of tickets is $80. That's for all eight games of the SEC tournament. Look at the shooting by Ole Miss. You can't tell that they're ninth in the league from their performance so far tonight. They lead 14-8. Oh, this is a very tough call. It's a turnover because the big guy put it on the floor off his foot in traffic and the chug was early and they got good help and Murph has every reason to complain. Patrick Eddy, who just came into the game, he is a 6'11 junior from Memphis, averaging six points and five boards. Jackson's shot, still not there. Jackson is 0 for 5 now. Gerald Glass, his shootout uh, rival, Four for five in the early going. That was the first one on the money, though. The others were bad misses for his talent. Blast in traffic. Oh. 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 I mean, he drew the defense. I, I just like his ability to bounce the ball. And that's going to open up things for him. Williamson looks inside. Nice look. Sims missed it, but was fouled. Well, Eddie snuck a peek and the glue on this club. He'll do anything they ask. Dale Brown wants something done. Ask Mr. Sims. Of course, his cousin Johnny Jones, the assistant, would be upset. But what a great go without the ball. Well, they call him Big Daddy. He's the Iron Man making his 52nd start today as Eddie quickly picks up his second foul. Now, he said Patrick rebounded well against Georgia, played very well. They need somebody to step up, I think, particularly tonight with these big guys that Dale Brown can throw in. Sims looking for his fourth point here. The free throw shooting woes of LSU have been well documented of late. Ninth in the conference, 65.9. But on their first two chances, Sims hits the bottom. And it's a 16-10 Ole Miss lead. Still the 2-3. Uh, Dale has played a lot of man-to-man -man of late and gone after people and taken them out of what they want. Roberts blocked the shot by Glass. Pretty good reaction. And he saved it. 
as I mentioned to you, I'd love to see Glass take 30 shots. I mean, this club, he could, he could certainly get away with it. Nobody would be upset. I look for the alley-oop as he snuck baseline. Sometimes he's a little too unselfish. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he'd be uh, the kind of guy you'd like to play with. He'd give it back to you. Now, Merck can see things because of his size. Medlick, a long three. Sims on the rebound. Quick out to Jackson. He's got Roberts, but gives it back to Williamson for three. Now, that's something Dale Brown addressed. He said they're going to string either Duval or Williamson along the three-second line as they push the ball up. Good acknowledgement by Chris Jackson. Mo Williamson with his first basket. And a shot rejected by O'Neal. Well, they're in together for the first time tonight. Yeah, you might beat one, but you got somebody else stepping in. Talk about Georgetown's inside the shot blocking ability. This might be an even match, huh? Matthews replaces Midlick for Ole Miss. That's the 54th block of the season for Shaquille O'Neal, and he needs only seven for the all-time LSU lead. And what do they need, four for the year to have right. the all-time record now? Four now for the all-time team lead. Barnes three won't go. Murphy off the offensive board. Well, in his zone, you occasionally don't have good checkout responsibility. Heady play by Murphy. Sims. Oh. They stopped not so much making the shot, but finding the hole. And they had a midnight meeting. Of course, uh, I'm normally stepping out at that time of the evening. <laughs> and he was the spokesman. Of course, Chris Jackson had a lot to say, but it sort of got their heads back on and involved in their team. That was after their loss to Georgia at home. Well, it's at 2 in the morning. But with Glass out there, he can really stretch the defense. Roberts coming way out there. Might sneak somebody baseline as Roberts comes out. Here's Glass with a baseline jumper. Too hard, but he'll wade in and save it. Pretty good speed there. And Matthews sets it up again. Under the nine-minute mark, first half. Bad pass. Put it on the floor. Turkey. Sims again. Out of bounds to Ole Miss. Here's Tim Jumper, normally a starter, making his first appearance in the Ole Miss lineup. 6'3", junior from Holly Springs, Mississippi, averaging 11 points a game. And Chucky Barnes, who got the start, goes to the bench. Tim Jumper, who's been bothered by a knee injury throughout his career, but took the brace off about three weeks ago and is playing better. Got the okay. And of course, psychologically, Murph wanted to talk to him before putting him in. Maybe just to change it up a little bit. Murphy inside to Eddie over the big guys, then tapped in. Well, that's Eddie play because the defense was drawn the reaction instinctively to block the shot. Good position. Ole Miss again by five. Here's Jackson for three, oh, partially blocked. He may have gotten hit. Strong rebound over Roberts. Matthews now to set it up. 7.50 left in the first half. Ole Miss has never trailed. I've got a feeling that they're going to save that man to man in the second half unless they get way behind. Murphy banks in a three. Look at his hand. And his father held his head. Did he call it? A kiss from deep. Well, his father said he's playing great. <laughs> Jackson still looking for his first hoop. Knocked out of bounds by Jumper. There's Sean Murphy's dad. What did he do again? He just put his hands up to his head like, I don't believe it. A big chuckle now. Well, Sean Murphy has been active. He has seven first half points. That's right on his average for a game. Amazing. See how he gets in position here as the defense is drawn. Really nobody to check him out whatsoever. Good slide by Murph. Now this one is the E in horse, if you call glass, and not Gerald either. Oh my goodness, Sean Murphy with a bank in three, and the Rebels have the lead. Ole Miss up 23-15 on LSU. Chris Jackson so far in the game is pitching a shutout. 
Getting some attention over on the bench. Looks like he's holding his arm, and he, he missed that one shot, but shot selection is something that he's normally pretty good at. Not taking real good ones at this point. Randy Duvall is in to replace Jackson. Duvall, the 6'4 junior from Baton Rouge. That's the shot you want to give, but look at this. O'Neal on the follow. The cleanup, man. Well, you force the big guy Roberts to take a fall away. You say to your 6'6 six six guy, put a body on Shaq. Forget Easier it. said than done. <laughs> exactly. Forget it. Nice look. Blocked by O'Neal and taken down by Duvall. Here come the Tigers. Williamson fanning out. Went the wrong way. He had the wide open shot and decided to pass it off. And as you said, looked the wrong way. Now, Maurice, Jackson. Gee, he was waiting. Uh, he got hit on a jump shot. I'm wondering if that was the one where it came up short. Well, he had some first half. Didn't he against Vegas? What do you have, 26 or something like that? <laughs> O'Neal, strong move and a block. But a foul before the shot on Murphy is first. Well, that's the kind of help you want as Patrick Eddy stepped over to help Sean Murphy out. You would think these two big guys could power the game all night long. Get it, go up. One misses, the other finish it off. And then once they decimate the inside people, then Chris and Maurice can start pumping the jumper. Why has that not happened? Well, I think they need a more of an inside philosophy, to be honest with you. It's just getting to know one another. Uh, Dale, obviously not comfortable with the two big guys playing together because they don't put defensive pressure on you, but they could be very tough by the end of the year as the personalities mesh. O'Neal, who hits 51% at the line, is right on the money, one of two. Nice play by Maurice. He knocked it away. Roberts lead pass. Williamson for the chance. And this time with two hands. I had him a game where he started to break the other way. Hit the back rim with a one-handed stuff. Rebels within three. Williamson almost got it away again. He really can show himself and then slap. Eddie, double teamed and foul. Should be Duvall. Yep. It is the reach in on Randy Duvall is first. Only the third against LSU. When you play big guys like this, and I mentioned the two big guys from Georgetown, you have to be a good inside passing team because they come looking for the jumper. They really react to a pump fake too. So if your guys can slide and get a hole, you got some. You're going to do some business in low. How do you compare Morning and Matumbo with uh, O'Neal and Roberts? Physically, these two are more impressive, I think. Nobutombo's a better shot blocker, but he can't play the offense that these two will play before they're finished. And Morning, you know, eventually he might be a power forward, to be honest with you, with that body. Built somewhat like you. <laughs> Not as swift a foot, obviously. Mine has dropped a few feet. <laughs> nice look. Now there's a kid who's really come alive. Maurice Williamson. And the Shaq with the easy finish. Boy, Williamson, since he's earned a starting spot, has really put a charge in this LSU offense. And scoring, dishing off, he's gotten the Tigers within two on that pass to O'Neal. Nice step through. And score. That'll be goaltending. Oh, that was a poor decision by O'Neal. Sure was, Tom. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to kick out of Murph. Now, this is what Neil Brown, I think, has to do. Get involved in the game more. That's the Dale Brown I've known. This is the look by Williamson, who you mentioned is just playing great basketball. And right here, the ability to pump and step through. And you're right. The decision, that's maybe a message one, though. I don't mind that as much early as later you don't do that. But I'm not so sure that would have gone. A tough angle to kiss. Glass misses the free throw and a foul on Singleton as Jumper took the rebound. And talking to Dale, he said that he anticipated a good team. He's tried to be like John Wooden a little bit, sit, cross the leg. He can't do that. I mean, he's a preacher man. He's got to exhort, cajole, and get him into it. Eddie with a touch pass, but Murphy can't get the shot away. Eddie, nice fake. He got O'Neal off the oh. floor and laid it in. You must pump fake against these big guys. And right now, great job by Ole Miss. Rebels by six. Pretty good spacing right now by LSU. 
Singleton cut off by Eddie, who scores anyway. Well, it's good for Dale right now with Chris Jackson sitting out, responding some to the trainer a little bit. They are playing well. Singleton leads the Tiger attack with six points. Straight up man, too. A little pulling the string has gotten him a little more involved. Glass spins, dishes to Eddie, missed the shot. Everything but. Here's Williamson. O'Neill should get right to the goal. And Roberts banks it in. No way to stop that. Now, anytime Roberts has it, Shaq O'Neill should just go to the inside of that box. Tigers within two. Ole Miss, with Gerald Glass scoring the first eight points of the game, has never trailed. And Singleton on him, too, right now. Pretty good defender. Jumper. Oh, that's in. That your man, Gerald Glass. Singleton forgot to put a body on him. 14 points in the first half for Gerald Glass. Chris Jackson on the bench for LSU has not scored. Williamson, nice drive. Strong pressure with the dribble. Maurice Williamson with seven points. And it's again a two-point Ole Miss lead. Can't let the guy penetrate. You must contain at the guard spot. Matthews wide open for the three. Taken by Duvall. Matthews cuts him off, dishes to the trainer O'Neal, and it wasn't a good pass. No, it was poor judgment, really. Nice look by Duval, but it's to whom you throw the basketball. You've got to control it and use better judgment. Well, the shootout so far has been no contest. Gerald Glass, off the offensive board, gets point number 14 here. And with 3.38 left in the first half, Ole Miss holds a two-point edge on LSU, 30-28, to back after a word from Pepsi. Check some other SEC scores. In the second half in Athens, look at this, Auburn, next to last in the league, trying to win on the road, 54-47 over the Bulldogs. And also, this is a first-half score from Tennessee in Knoxville, Vanderbilt, 34-31. Those two teams a little bit of a high for yeah. first. They're a, a log jam at the top. Actually, I guess uh, Alabama, as with virtue of its win over Florida last night, with a half-game lead, but a log jam at the top. And, of course, we'll have all the scores for you at halftime on the Budweiser scoreboard. Nice. Eddie is fouled. And Glass on the money with the pass to the correct hand, and that leads, it educates your big guy to drop baseline. Great luck. Eddie's giving him a lift off the bench. Sure has. Dale Brown a little more animated now. Uh, his club has picked it up a little bit. It tells you old, old, old Miss uh, responding pretty good. Very unselfish team, and that stems from Glass, I think. When your good or premier player gives it up, it makes people feel pretty good. Great pass uh, by Glass that uh, time. Some look to the correct hand. So many kids don't do that. But, of course, free throw shooting by Eddie is an adventure, to say the least, and he's two for four. Don't sit under that basket, huh? When he's shooting, <laughs> might get hurt. Hard hat area. <laughs> Second chance points. Surprisingly, Ole Miss way on top, and they have seven offensive rebounds to five for LSU. And see how he's advanced more so than O'Neal as an offensive player. I mean, they've got to get some help. The guards are afraid to go down, but I think you're going to have to go regardless. He'll bury the front line people. The lead is one. Singleton really does work his guy away from the ball. Singleton matched up with Glass. Trying to post him up. They're going the other way on him. Eddie with an outside shot. Not a good effort. And here's Williamson on the fly for the Tigers. Mo Williamson, a reach-in foul on Midlick. Not a bad giveaway either because it was off to the races. First on Midlick and the sixth against the Rebels. So the ball will be out of bounds to LSU. Um, Ed Murphy's got to feel pretty good, though, about tempo. They haven't gotten any opportunity breaks, which they would take, but they've been able to come down, move the basketball, get some pretty good shots. 
And of course, LSU is within one, and perhaps the basket of taking the lead without Jackson. That's the shot you want to give him. Going away, you can't let him drop to the middle and turn. He'll nail it. Roberts can't hit, and Ole Miss with a chance to extend its lead. Glass. Eddie off the offensive board. <laughs> Back to the line. Well, Glass soft enough to let the big guys get in position. Eddie rising to the occasion. Great offensive rebound. Roberts with his second personal foul. And seven now on LSU. Patrick Eddie off the Rebel bench has contributed four points, but he has done a whale of a job on the boards. Chris, you mentioned the poor free throw, 52%. Your people should know that and be ready, particularly obviously on the second one or on a one-on-one -on, -one on the first one. Jack O'Neill back for the Tigers. And Roberts will trot to the bench. Four rebounds for Eddie tonight. I wouldn't mind inviting Stanley to dinner with us after the game. Now he's on this crash diet. <laughs> Only if you're picking up. That's right. If he wasn't on it, we'd let you pay. 32-30. Big kid. Approaching the two-minute mark of the first half. Williamson, Midlick got him with the body. A little pick and roll they usually run for Chris Jackson. And Maurice Williamson really taking over in his absence. Jackson over on the LSU bench, and at last report had the ice pack on his left wrist. Jackson has not scored in the game and still there with the ice on the mm -hmm. hand, I guess it is, not the wrist. So I'm curious to see whether it's the injury or they started playing a little bit better and letting him rest until halftime. At least it's the left hand. Williamson rattles the free throw down. He's only a 56% shooter at the line. You know, we were the weekend talking about great dribblers in the names Davies and Cousy and McGuire from the old days. And you think of Oscar, of recent memory, Ernie DiGregori, and this kid, Chris Jackson, has got to be one of the great handlers of the basketball. He's done a few station drills. I think he's the quickest off the dribble I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Game is tied. Two minutes to play. Little curl. Jumper. First basket. The psychological ploy working. He's got some ability. Bad pass. Williamson sails it out of bounds. Fifth turnover committed by the Tigers of Dale Brown. Well, on the road, Dale's got one of the best records in the country on the road. And in the conference, I think he has the top one in his last 10 years, the decade. And they just really, I, I would think, just hang tough, make some adjustments at halftime, and maybe become a little more aggressive defensively. Jumper, two in a row. What did Murphy say on the Pines? A master of manipulation. 36-32 Rebels, just over a minute left in the half. Uh, Shaq hasn't touched it at all since he's, there you go. Say goodnight. Didn't he take a big giant step? Both uh, feet? I think it's pretty good position, Ben. You know, they know how to use the footwork. Eddie's got to chuck him out. I mean, it's easier said. You know, he almost got as big as a linebacker to bang him out. O'Neal has seven points. Ed Murphy wants you to call the walk, by the way. <laughs> I questioned it. Yeah. There's a bad pass and a push off. Trying to get position. Gerald Glass, I believe. And how about Singleton? Great fronting of the post. Knowing he had help in the rear. Here's Chris Jackson coming back for LSU. Jackson was out of the game. What would you guess, Bill? About 10 minutes? At least. At least. And it's probably the hand, but I think more so a good run by LSU. Still flexing that left hand. That's the one he had the ice on. And in shootout two, who would have guessed with 50 seconds left in the half, the last time he had zero, I'm sure it was in Biddy League, and the coach's son was getting all the points. Didn't want Chris to touch it. Well, he equaled his career low earlier this year, only 11 against Alabama. Here's Singleton at the line for the Tigers. He's one of those kids that wants to win, though. I think he's got a great attitude. Had an opportunity this weekend to spend some time with him, more so than normal. And uh, just really is enjoying the college atmosphere. Singleton second free throw no good. Eddie manages to get rid of it to Jumper. Good communication. Jumper letting him know. 
Rebels by one with the basketball. There's about a four-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Doesn't look like they're going for one. They're looking for a good one as quickly as they can get it. Look at the front by Shaq. He blocks off the whole baseline. <laughs> like an eclipse. Harvell's baseline jumper, tough shot, and a tougher rebound by O'Neal. And not a good one. I mean, you're looking for a good one if you take it. Now the booze for Jackson, who fires a three. Still hasn't scored. Out of bounds to Ole Miss with three seconds left. LSU trying to get the pressure in full. You might see a long pass here. With LSU having everybody up there. Oh, they gave it to LSU. Now well, they changed the call, and Murphy's going crazy. Now he's going to put people back in. Eddie had taken out, looking for some offense and some speed with Matthews. Watch the alley oop now. Roberts carves a spot, and they either throw it to him or a screen across for O'Neill. They've got to get everybody back yeah, there. They, they've got to the change. Jumper. They've right. got to change this. One. Here comes Murphy. Williamson, no good as the half comes to an end. Well, the Ole Miss Rebels never trailed in the first 20 minutes, and they'll go to the locker room on top by one, 36-35. Glass has outscored Jackson 14 to zip. Stay with us at halftime. Coming up at intermission, we'll take a look at our SEC. Here we go with Pistol Pete passing it off to Trivet. Back to Pete. Jump shot. Long one. Bank. Good. There's 39. Bang on the top. Bang on the top. Left on the rebound. Here's another try. No good. Trivet coming down to the left side. Bob Lang has it off to Pete. This maybe it is. And there it was, breaking Oscar Robertson's record, ironically against these same Ole Miss Rebels. And Pistol Pete wound up with 3,667 points in his 83 games. And that was the one that broke Oscar Robertson's record. Sad to lose him so young. And I knew his dad pressed very well. Great friend of my old coach, Duty Moore. They loved the game. And a lot of people forgot what a great shooter he was. Absolutely. And for his passing in the NBA, of course, he could drill it, no question. Chris Jackson has evoked many memories of Pistol Pete in Baton Rouge. There's Jackson's first basket of the night. A uh, degree of difficulty. Uh, and Murph just rolled his eyes because you don't want to let him get going. He can take it over himself. I knew you couldn't shut him out all night. <laughs> and LSU has its first lead of the game. A little dipsy do for his first deuce. Straight up, man. Barnes, Midlick, Eddie, Murphy. And glass for Ole Miss. Roberts, O'Neill, Williamson, Jackson, and Singleton for LSU. Quick jump, huh? Darrell Glass, his 16 points. Well, the experience, he just gave Singleton a little nudge as the pass arrived, and then out jumped him. Teams trade baskets in the first minute. Ole Miss by one. Singleton blocked by Eddie. You know that the guy is going to start lighting it up at some point in the game and a little hang time and dip the head and bang it home. Here's Williamson with a fake, then he leans in and scores. Very fortunate. I think if the defender had fallen to the floor, he may have been tagged with one. Nice play by Maurice, though. 11 points for Williamson, LSU's top scorer. Tigers by one. Bad pass, stolen by Singleton. Chases down the pass from Williamson to Jackson. Glass blocked it. Take that, huh? And that time, Jackson rattles it through. That, that pass that was stolen by Singleton was a tribute to working on defense. He really denies. LSU with its biggest lead. Nice play again. Singleton knocks it away. Jackson racing against Midlick, lays it up, and in. Took a trip around the hook. Uh, great use of the bounce as the defense, Ed Murphy wants the quick timeout. He's got problems now because Mr. Jackson, Mr. Action, 
is into the game, and this is glass on glass. Great defensive play, and of course the alert. Chris Jackson gets into a passing lane and nails it. Chris Jackson smoking out of the gate with six quick points, and LSU has taken over the lead. We'll be right back. LSU up on Ole Miss, 43-38. They've done it by outscoring the Rebels 8-2 since the start of the second half. And Vernell Singleton fights over the pick. He's done a terrific job on that end of the floor, and it's really ignited LSU. Of course, the ability to bounce in the open floor by the scintillating Sop. And the pressure now, we mentioned Dale Brown might save the man-to-man -man full. Now he's going after it a little bit. And I think they take on a new personality when they're in this kind of day. LSU has gotten four points off Ole Miss turnovers in the first two and a half minutes of the second half. Chris Jackson, after missing his first seven shots, now has six points. Here's Murphy for the Rebels as Eddie tries to post up O'Neal inside. Now Glass keeps active, but they got to set bumps on Singleton. That's the key. Murphy, a three-pointer. He banked one in in the first half. Eddie off the offensive board. Williamson knocks it away. You notice how Glass is active, but Singleton's able to get through. That means they're not getting in position to nail the, the defender. Midlick looks inside to Glass. Eddie. Here's Jumper. And boy, it shacked him out after him, too. O'Neal right up on him. A jumper's been a pleasant addition for Ed Murphy. He came in at that last timeout after not starting the second half. He has six points in the game. There's a three. three Where have you been? That's nine now for Jackson, and LSU has its biggest lead. That's as quite a half as he'll ever have, I think. Zero points, 0 for 7. As a basketball fan, you love to sit down and watch him in action. Because if you're Murphy, you're not too happy at all. O'Neal all over Eddie. And Singleton all over Glass. Bad oh, oh, bad shot by oh, Eddie, I started to say. Oh. He line drives it through. That was unattractive but effective. And the defense on the low post really forced Eddie to take this wild shot. Singleton really took Glass out of it. He used it all. All the orange on the tin came off. <laughs> First foul on Shaq O'Neal. And Patrick Eddy will go to the free throw line, where he has hit three of six tonight. Completes the three-point trip. And he also has six rebounds off the Rebel bench tonight, and he makes it a three-point Tiger lead. And Tom, Tim Jumper's going to really have to lace him up here. Good job. Jumper with a steal. Quick pass to Glass against Singleton. Singleton reached in and fouled. And Glass came up hobbling just a little bit. Not a bad giveaway, but that sequence, you've got... Chris Jackson ready to rock and roll and deliver, and he's really had more trouble of late with the dribble. You know, he said to me the last week he's thinking instead of playing, and right here, glass in the open floor, normally able to finish, so not a bad tag. Second on Singleton, two against the Tigers this half. Ole Miss with a basketball, trailing by three. They never trailed in the first half, led by as many as ten. Midley. Eddie. Patrick Eddy over the back of O'Neal for his third foul. You have to make, as a player, the coach play you, Tom. And Singleton is doing that. He's forcing himself, he's willing himself into Dale Brown's mind. That he can guard, you got to play. And he really doesn't need the ball to be an impact player either for Dale. O'Neal out, replaced by Roberts for Dale Brown's LSU team. That's the score. Nice Under 16 play. minutes, there's Jumper saving it, but he was out of bounds. Great denial, and that was a long way, that pass. Jumper in the passing lane, almost comes up, but a marvelous play. Harvell in for the Rebels, replacing Pat Eddy. Now, Murph playing like Tom Nelson right now. The two big guys, only one on the floor, so he can play smaller with Harvell. They're going to change the clock to a new 45, I think, because of possession. Dale Brown with only one of his twin towers on the court. Two. Roberts is in. O'Neal is out. 
Got to get help on that pick and roll. Glass did a good job. Glass on the switch picked up Jackson. There's the switch back now. Williamson, a quick move on Midlick. He got it. Exploding to the basket. I mean, he swayed left and right and extended. Five-point Tiger lead. Scoring a little easier now, LSU, aren't they? They are indeed. Williamson with 13 points now. Jumper off balance on that one. Not a good one. Here's Williamson. Three on two. Singleton. No good. Now, Maurice had a choice. Look at this play. Hustling play by Glass. And a foul. He'll go to the free throw line. It's funny. When you come up empty at one end, you sort of drop back. You don't see the offense. And all of a sudden, the other way. But this is the play earlier where Williamson moved the fake right and then penetrated. And a gorgeous-looking release. He has matured. Of course, here's the defense trotting back. A little bit of a save defensively by Stanley Roberts, but not good play or heads-up play defensively by LSU. Singleton committing his third foul. Gerald Glass with 17 points now. He's 8 of 14 from the field. 1 of 2 at the free throw line. He also has 5 rebounds. And, of course, that great game last year's shootout when he had 53 against LSU, exceeded only by Jackson's 55. It hasn't materialized tonight, but a good game nevertheless. Uh, it's heating up a little bit in the second half, these two. <laughs> Roberts against Murphy. Murphy cuts him off. Roberts shoots anyway. Sims off the board. A good job, but with the smaller lineup, when Murph played his man, nobody else able to hold off. Tigers again by five. Boudreau now trying to do a job on Glass. He should come away from the goal a little bit now with Boudreau. I think he can do some punish, punish him outside. Boudreau replacing Singleton for the defensive duties on Glass. He just went by. Oh, that should have been a goal ten. Oh, you got to score. Oh, they missed the goal ten there. And Jackson makes a oh. pay. Oh. Oh. oh, what do you do? Help, coach, on that particular kiss. Under 14 minutes to play, 52-45, LSU's biggest lead. Steal by Williamson. He got it. Look at him dip under, use the rim, and that big goaltending call changed the game right around. All of a sudden, nine, bang. The LSU Tigers now with their longest lead. Ed Murphy stalking the sideline like an angry bear. Well, he had every right to jump up, though. And what was smart about it, he didn't get the tee and turn the ball over. You know, at least they got a shot out of it. Another almost steal by Boudreaux, but Glass comes up short. Out of bounds, and it will go to LSU. Here's the... Here's the no goal ten yeah. call. I thought this was good. Now, you can pin it in college, but now it's on its way down, you see, and that's when the call should have been made. Ooh. The ball was on its way down off the glass, but no call, and LSU has extended the lead. 54% for the game, 49% for Ole Miss. And LSU, when they shoot over 50%, 12-0. Mm. Uh, you know what? Uh, Ole Miss is in trouble now with only one foul because LSU, you know, Williamson and the big guys don't shoot good free throws. They've got a long way to go, and it, it could be a problem. You'd rather put them on the line, particularly late in the game. That's the formula Georgia used to upset the Tigers. O'Neal misses, and the rebound by Harvell. Real solid defense that trip. Don't forget, we'll be picking a golf most viable player in this game. One from each team as Harvell hits a three. Well, that'll get you back in a hurry. And they have to do that because Glass was denied in front it by Singleton, and the defense gave the cushion. 
Golf will donate $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of both schools as part of our Golf MVP program. There's Sims from 15. Count it. There is solid citizen. Citizen Kane. Whatever they need, he delivers. Ten points for Wayne Sims, and it's 56-48 LSU. Good cut. Glass got the roll. And Matthews acknowledging. Well, they need motion for him and bumps. 20 points for Gerald Glass. Rebels within six. And the coach is really getting after them now. Jackson, three, bottoms out. Oh, that's such a weapon. A guy with that ability to go by and still shoot the basketball. Tigers equal their longest lead. Jackson now with 14 points, two of six on three-pointers. Those two makes in this half was scoreless at halftime. A little better sink getting Glass the ball as he's coming to it. Here's Glass drawing a crowd nice. and dishing to Murphy. Knocked out of bounds and a foul. Duvall of LSU. Pretty inside play. Does Glass attract some people, Tom? And all of a sudden, three. Healthy down and, of course, the alert Murph and a great heady play by Gerald Glass. Sean Murphy, perhaps if he'd have powered it right up, he could have gotten the goal and not mm -hmm. the foul. When the big guy puts it on the uh, on the floor, that attracts problems as Roberts comes back in for LSU. Of course, when you get it with the pressure coming from your right side, you need the dribble to adjust to the left. You know what I mean? The big guys are coming from that trap. Murphy tips the two free throws. He has nine in the game and four rebounds. Mo Williamson returns for the Tigers, and here's Pat Eddy for Ole Miss. Okay, Murph's done a nice job defensively. Eddie has to pick it up just where he left off. Seven-point LSU lead. Jackson guarded by Jumper. And a foul, Ooh. Tim Jumper. Uh, he got him earlier, but you see Chris forcing the issue as Jumper tried to seal off the baseline. Now, that's pretty good use of the power dribble. I mean, he exploded around the corner. And, of course, Jackson is the LSU player you do not want to foul. Hitting 90.6% at the line, first in the conference and third in all of college basketball. He's working on a string of 19 straight free throws now. Earlier this year, had a string of 35 in a row. The only time he won't get doubles, you got to tie his hands for the evening. That was in jeopardy early, but Jackson has gone on past that. See what a great free throw shooter he is. Great rotation on the ball. Here's Chucky Barnes in for the Rebels, and Jumper will go to the bench. Still extending the floor. The guard's putting pressure. LSU by nine with 11 minutes left. All Ole Miss in the first half, all LSU so far in the second. So when Murphy's in, he drags Roberts out, and he has to play him. It opens up the inside, and tough pass by Matthews. Glass on his heels. You're to get it to him. Well, what a turnaround for Chris Jackson. Billy was 0 for 7 in the first half as we check another score. Kentucky with a five-point lead on the road at Starkville. And a final, Georgia coming from behind to best Auburn. Roberts had it knocked away, and Eddie has it. Matthews with great help. Jackson getting in trouble with the bounce again, and that's not his game. Arvell for the Rebels, puts it up over Sims, short, glass in position, hooks it, no good. Matthews saves, glass will take it again. Nice look by Matthews, huh? got it right back to the marquee player. They got to make it a scrappier kind of set, don't you think? Yes. They got to go after it just like they did that set. Glass now with 22, here's Williamson spinning on Matthews, forces it, Eddie got a piece of it and holds it down. Good play by Eddie, and Ole Miss with a chance to chip into that lead before a sellout crowd here at the Coliseum. Backcourt foul, Mo Williamson first. But that gets the crowd into it, too. I mean, they've got to make it a tough situation for LSU. Rattle them a little bit. We've got a timeout. Chris Jackson 0 for 7 in the first half, 6 of 7 in this frame, and LSU with a 7-point lead left in this game. LSU down by one at halftime has come on strong and Ed Murphy's team 
which never trailed in the first half, now down by seven. How would you like to be Dale Brown? You go in at halftime, and you're going to diagram some things because that's what they tell you when you become a coach. <laughs> and, and, and you know that your star player hasn't given you anything, and you're right there, and that you don't even have to tell him to come out and turn it on. I mean, he, he knows his ability better than anybody, and he has just stepped forward. Six of seven shooting for Jackson this half after going 0 for 7 in the first. Two they can shake last. Singleton's done a good job on him. There's Singleton getting a hand in there, deflecting that pass momentarily. But Glass uses a pick for the shot. Can't hit it. Roberts on a strong rebound. Nice bump by Eddie. 61-54 Tigers. And remember, only two fouls. Right now by Ole Miss. Roberts muscles in and then is fouled by Eddie. Well, he lowered his shoulder like a pulling guard and to get free. <laughs> uh, well, he lowers it. It's all over. You're right. But they've got to foul a little bit, getting into foul trouble. And right there, the lean in there initially was not as tough as you would think. It looked at it at first. But right here, he's got to give the foul. Give him the chuck and don't let him get that close to finish it off. Four on Eddie. Remember, it takes six for disqualification in the SEC this year. Roberts hits the free throw. He's a 53% shooter at the line. That's his seventh point. He's had nine double-double games in his first season of college basketball. Glass on the rebound. 62-54, LSU by eight. Just over nine minutes left in the game. Here's Barnes on the point, guarded by Williamson. Again, uh, Glass has to be active. So there's a good seal off and better defense. Singleton batted it away. Barnes to Harvell on a wing. Hit a three a moment ago. Give him... Up to two, they say it too. Foot was on the line, so that's seven in the game for Harvell. Makes it a six-point LSU lead. Uh, they need some stops. Here's the one four. Oh, Jackson lost it, but Singleton is fouled. That's five on Eddie. Of course, the giveaway. They're in a position. They give. He gives his son a rest. Let's Eddie get the foul. Unfortunately, they're going to have to give more fouls. This is the one for four along the baseline. Let the Magic Man make some penetration. Stumbles, but this is a good foul, believe it or not. John Murphy comes back in, and Eddie will go out with five fouls, one away from disqualification. There he is after picking up his fifth. 8.27 left in the game. Singleton at the line. Singleton, a 61% shooter, is only one of three tonight. Already over his average. A few overzealous fans here. Uh, what was that? Behind us, I don't know. Bill was just uh, ambushed, luckily, by several <laughs> lovely uh, Ole Miss cheerleaders. I don't know what that was about, Bill, but <laughs> I'm afraid to ask. Barnes looks inside, gets a screen from Murphy. Again, the motion. Glass able to maneuver wherever he wants. It's really his game. Now he brings Singleton outside. Looking to give him a little bump. Glass, triple team, oh, but he scores. Oh, uh, that's taking over. I think he's a little too laid back, Tom. I, I think he really has to go get it. I mean, it's his team. It's time for him to take over like this man is. Oh. Jackson with a three. Well, so much from feeling uncomfortable in his home state. <laughs> Jackson with 19 points all in the second half. And LSU goes up 66-58. See, the dilemma in guarding Chris is his great burst of speed. I mean, you really have to force him to bounce it and get some help or hope he's not hitting that jumper at all. Here's Glass. He has 24 points. Matthews dishes back to Glass over Roberts. Roberts blocked it, then lost it out of bounds. Now, there was some banging right there, but Stanley very active coming back to the goal. Now, this is just a major league move, a tough angle for a kiss, and up and over. He does propel himself into the air in a very strong fashion. Shaq O'Neal for LSU. 
Roberts goes out. Sims sort of stiffened down there, helping out Singleton. Here's Glass. Jump hook short. O'Neal has it. Jackson in front court against the freshman Barnes. Jackson pushed off with his off hand, but they'll call Barnes on the foul. He did. No question he did, but he got hit first. In fairness, if they hadn't blown the whistle, initially the bump by Barnes right here. Uh, there's the contact. Now the push. See it? Uh, you teach your kids to ward off with that open arm. No question he did push, though. But the foul earlier. Fifth team foul against Ole Miss. Here's Jackson, a quick three. Yes! He's in a flow right now. I mean, he didn't even catch it and look. He caught it and flung it. 22 second half points for Chris Jackson. On fire. Who is four for four three point shots in the second half. Uh, Glass has got to get to matching them. Shootout may develop yet. Barnes, that one looked very ugly. Murphy can't follow. Out of bounds to the Reds. That was not stroke, huh? Here's Pat Eddy, five fouls and all back on the court for the Rebels. Also in for the Rebels, David Midlake. All right, here the defense sort of created that hurry, and that's a real estate shot <laughs> Did you on the wrong side of the street. <laughs> Did you used to have any players that shot oh, that way? We had a kid one year that led the country in neck balls. That's where you stick the ball between the prong and the glass. <laughs> no touch. Eddie comes out to feed inside. Here's Barnes again, double teamed. You see why he doesn't shoot much. Well, he just fouled on Williamson, too. Glass for three. Barnes has the offensive board, and that one looked good. And maybe one after, too. Less than six minutes left. LSU leads by nine. Now take a look at the 1-4 here now. It's all Chris's basketball. Everybody along the baseline. He can do what he wants. Finally missed one. Ole Miss has it. Here's Glass leading the break. LSU gets back very well on defense. Eddie. Oh, costly turnover for the Rebels as Patrick Eddy travels. Didn't need it. And Barnes wants a minute. Needs a blow. Twelve turnovers now against the Rebels. Seven LSU. The announcers for this game, selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Teller Productions, the broadcast and copyright presentation. Any use of the broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot is prohibited. Here's that game we were mentioned earlier. 29 turnovers by the Rebels. Tim Jumper on the floor for Ed Murphy. Jackson. Oh. Forget it. Forget it right now. Double clutching. Soft enough to bank. Oh. And the shootout is all even. 24 glass. 24 Jackson. CJ's all in the second half. He has been tough. Dale Brown used the pick and roll that time to help him out. Harvell for three. No. And Roberts with a rebound, and right now, LSU starting to pull away from the Rebels. One and done. Not a good play there. Midlick behind the back. Foul. That'll be on Singleton, and that'll be his fourth. Well, you can play pretty good D and fight over and challenge the shot, but when a guy can linger between the third and fourth floor, it doesn't mean too much. Concentration and follow-through on the kiss. Deval replaces Sims in the LSU lineup. Dale Brown says Chris Jackson is so unemotional about basketball and life in general. Here's the dish to jumper inside who draws the foul. And I guess that's the perfect demeanor for your star who is 0 for 7 in the first half. He doesn't panic. He doesn't get uptight about it. He just reacts to the moment and comes out and lights it up in the second half. Tom, when you know you're as good as, as he obviously does, he knows what he can do and who he can do it against. And it's just a, a matter of poise. And he did develop at halftime uh, in his mind the ability to go and do what, exactly what he wanted, whether it was a jump shot or the drive. And he has just taken over for LSU. Have you seen many guards uh, that can take over a game the way he can? No, no, because his dribbling ability, he can take it over with the pass, too. I think that's what makes him tough. He can drive and get people or track people and give it to his teammates. Jumpers, two free throws, cut the lead back to nine. Now here's that 1-4, four. four along the baseline, and he can turn the corner or shoot the long one. 
spinning on jumper, hesitating, and scoring. Well, right now it's uh, dessert time. Nobody can really stop him. You just 20. can't get over quick enough to help on him. <laughs> There's no way. 26 now for Jackson, who takes the lead in the shootout. Glass tries to answer. Got hit. And a foul. Singleton, number five. Glass with a chance for three. Well, two of the premier players in the country now just assuming that mantle. When in doubt, get it to the key performer. And here's the same idea. Draw attention. If the guy slides by, you double clutch. If not, lean in and try and go for three. Five fouls on Singleton, who's done a good job defensing Glass, despite would like, Gerald's 26 points. Tom, they'd like to see him on the pines. Chris, the other end now, Chris Jackson. They just have to double on him, to be honest. They're really not coming out. They're leaving Tim Jumper out alone, and he's just not able to cope. Saw the numbers on Glass. Remember, that's in two years at Ole Miss now because he had his first two years at Delta State. He's hit 11 of 24 from the field and has seven rebounds. 27 points, seven rebounds. Now, Chucky Barnes is a little switch now by Murph. Trying to see if he can shake it up. This will be go-to-school time here. Jackson misses one on the floor. Who's got it? Barnes of Ole Miss. Uh, Chris is settling quickly for the jumper, and he's very close. He can go by his guy. Barnes working against Williamson. Here's Glass. Spins on Singleton. Pass. And he puts it home. Believe it or not, he had no shot but to throw that strong. I give him a pass on that. All right, if you say so. <laughs> oh. He was dead with a good defensive reaction by LSU, but Tiger. got it up for Eddie. Tigers call a timeout, 73-67 the LSU lead. Back to Aubrey from Oxford, Roger Roebuck, our producer, Dave Burchett, our director. LSU with a 73-67 lead. Let's take a look at the answer now to our SEC Pepsi Trivia Challenge question. Which school has been to a postseason tournament 11 straight years, the longest string in the SEC? It is LSU. In fact, six of those to NCAA tournament play. You can still answer the question correctly and enter the contest. Call 1-900-226-PEPSI to answer the question and enter for a chance to win a trip for two to the SEC tournament in Orlando. And this is cute. Jumper tried to get the ball to take it out. <laughs> they weren't buying it, huh? No, no. Officials on top of it. Not a bad try. You don't think the uh, large leprechaun Murphy had anything to do with that, do you? <laughs> a little sleight of hand, and Barnes is going to have to tee it up. Well, they're back in their regular set now. LSU shooting 65% from the field this half. They've come from one down at intermission to take the lead. You don't want to foul this guy, but I, Chris... Eddie can't afford to give one away. Maybe Midler could go down if, if Roberts gets. Look at this shot. Not a good one. Knocked out of bounds, but back to LSU. Well, the fans on that side are furious, but the official right on top of it and was now they're going to discuss it. Murphy. Now he looks on, and David Dodge. After a, a little consultation, changes the call. Look at uh, Murphy's smile. That's as emphatic as a call I've ever seen turned the other way. I mean, that's like going into Dodge, huh? Robbing the bank and telling the sheriff you didn't do it. Ooh. And he's wide open. He hit it. Patrick Eddy has 12 points in a reserve role for Ole Miss. And with less than three minutes left, they've cut the lead to four. If they go to Roberts, I'd give the foul. Let the guard go down. Just don't let this guy beat you. Jackson short. Roberts taps it back to Williamson, and Jackson has it again. And Midlick said, you take him. He didn't want him. Dale Brown wants a timeout. They don't see him. Now they do. Timeout. LSU calls timeout with 2.36 left in the game. Tigers with the ball and a four-point lead. Back after a word from your local station. We're back in Oxford, LSU with the basketball leading 73-69. Glass goes for the steal on Sims and commits the foul, and that is the sixth. They'll put him in the bonus on the next one, and that's got to be part of the strategy. Yeah, I would think, particularly with the big guys on the floor at the same time, and we mentioned Maurice Williamson as well, not nailing the free throws. 
That's been the Achilles heel down the stretch for this LSU team, the inability to hit free throws. They missed 10 of the first of a one plus one against Georgia. Now they got a foul on him. Why, oh. why wouldn't they foul him? Well, because Eddie has five fouls. I didn't mean him. I, I'm from yeah. the top or the wing. You got to go down and give it to him. Roberts pounds it through, and the LSU lead goes to six. A little two-three zone causing a little more time to be used. Barnes for three. Glass on the follow. Way from the corner. I think they've got to use that foul right now. Four-point lead, less than two minutes. Gerald Glass, 29 points. Chris Jackson has 26. The other thing, I, if I were Barnes, I would face guard, not let Jackson get the ball back. Keep him out of the play. Shot clock at 25. Game clock at a minute 30. Jackson bolts and drops it. The great hesitation drew both his man and the big guy, Eddie. Jackson with 28 all in the second half. Well, Ole Miss has got to shoot it quickly and go get it. We've got to get it to Glass. He's spotting up for a three. Midlick penetrates and is fouled. 82% free throw shooter. This should have never happened, Tom. You just got to give it now. Not Eddie, but see Sean Murphy, too, over there. He may have been the guy that should have given it before he jammed it. Now, live, his dad was just talking to him about the very same thing. But this is just big league, major league. The ability to just hesitate, draw, pull like a yo-yo. Your man and the big guy. Jackson just committing the foul, and Midlick will toe the line, an 81% free throw shooter. Rattled that one through. I just see them saying give the foul here, the two coaches. Murph and Maurice Harrell saying to both Glass and Murphy. Ole Miss is 10 for 10 at the free throw line in the second half. They've cut the lead again to four. Jackson dribbles through the defenders. Here's Williamson. He's not a good free throw shooter either. Midlick trying to foul him. Glass knocked him to the court. Still no call. Midlick with a steal. Glass for the jam. He got fouled too. A giveaway by Chris Jackson. That is unbelievable. They gave the foul to Williamson. The referees let it go. It ends up a turnover. Look at that. Williamson on the floor. Midlick fouled as well. The giveaway. Well, the money man has been doing it all year. Jackson late. Now, here's the foul. Williamson falls. And now the turnover. Unbelievable as Wayne Sims coughs it up. And Chris should have really let it go. Send it in. Mr. Glass. 50 seconds left. And Gerald Glass at the line with a chance to cut it to one when we come back. After a word from the Southeastern Conference. One, there's the story of the game in the shootout. Amazing. You know, in the NBA, they have players that have a trademark, or their name is a trademark for the club. It's great to see in college two guys who, marquee guys, it's their team, and they take over. And these two certainly have stepped forward. Gerald Glass is a 75% free throw shooter. He's hit three of four at the line tonight. Ole Miss had a chance to talk over who to foul and when to foul, too. Because if he makes one down one, I don't know if I'd wait with the 50. I would give one early. Because now Dale Brown counters with a pretty good shooting club. He's got the big guys out. Glass. No good. Rebounded by Sims. Well, they need another trip either way. Williamson up to Jackson. And he'll have a pass in. He's blocked by Harvell. Wow. Big time block. 30 seconds left. And Ole Miss calls a timeout. That's one timeout left now for Ole Miss. LSU is out of timeouts, and here's that block by Harvell. He got fouled way after the shot. The body's banging, but it's all ball early. And, of course, the reaction and a play on. Murphy plans the strategy. 30 seconds left. Ole Miss with the ball down two. We'll be back. 
Western Tennessee against Auburn on our SEC game of the week. That's a 4 o'clock Eastern time start from the loveliest village on the plains. And then a week from tonight in Baton Rouge, Auburn will take on LSU in the Battle of Tigers. Well, here is a big play in the game, which gives LSU uh, a chance to win it. Why did Jackson want to shoot uh, the should, ball He here? should have taken it out. He should have taken it out, and he does get fouled. But at the end of games, you don't know what officials are going to do. He does get hit. There is body action. But if Chris kept it out, he could have run the clock, had the ball. He could have been the guy on the foul line. Instead, right now, Ole Miss with a chance to nod it. All right, Ole Miss will put the ball in play. Jumper having trouble calls a timeout. Timeout, Ole Miss. That's their final timeout. Each team out of timeouts as Jumper can't get the ball in play and uh, has to call a timeout. And I saw Gerald Glass sort of stroll uh, to the huddle a little bit upset with that. What does that do to your star player now when you have to come back with another desperation timeout? Well, I, I think he was mad at Jumper because Midlick was free. You taking it out usually have one option in these tough situations. You've got to bang it. Midlick was free, and then they would have had their set. I think he was mad that they wasted the last timeout in case they may have needed it later. Ole Miss is out and ready to go again now. 30 seconds left, and LSU leading 77-75. Here are Gulf MVPs. Who else? The participants in shootout two. Glass with 31 points and eight rebounds. Chris Jackson with 28 points all in the second half. As part of the Gulf MVP program, Gulf will donate $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. First time the truck hasn't consulted with us all year, huh? <laughs> Did it on her own. Less pressure. Eddie free if they wanted to give it to him. And he does take it, Eddie. Now they got to get it back to the guard. Midlick takes it. Guarded by Jackson. Singleton's on glass. Keep your eye on him. Has the ball right there. Puts it up. Gerald Glass. Got it. Fourteen. Game tied. Down to the last ten seconds. Williamson drives and it's fouled with eight seconds left. Midlick with the giveaway by the foul line, really not that big as Williamson had turned the corner, exploding to the goal. What penetration from these two fine guards. Right here, you see the squeeze? Midlick doesn't quite get the help he needed to make a pinch, but Eddie with the walk call, not a bad situation. This looked good right in front of us from the get-go. Good pull up. Your marquee player nailing it. Here's Williamson, a 56% shooter. He got it. He's three for three at the line tonight. In the pressure situation, Mo Williamson gives LSU a one point lead. And our numbers all miss no timeout, so they're going to have to get the ball up quickly. Less dribbling, more passing. LSU by two. Eight seconds left. Full court pressure. Oh, Midlick. Great job with the defense. Glass with one. It won't go. And LSU on the free throws by Maurice Williamson wins the game. Well, Glass put it up. He wanted a foul call. He really didn't have a very good shot as they had to struggle. Midlick had to struggle to get it up court. And Glass let go on the three-point shot that came off the rim. That's where a case where the kids have to do it on their own. LSU defensively forced the ball to be in front of them. And there's the two great players enjoying one another's ball game. I mean, they really went after one. Here's the mention. Midlick didn't have real good control, but they got it to Glass. And he had a chance here and no foul. Good non-call. And who's there but Vernell Singleton. Great defense. In the shootout, Gerald Glass has 33 points. Chris Jackson, zero at halftime, winds up with 28. LSU will have no worse than a share of first place in the SEC as they go on the road to down the Ole Miss Rebels in a tight one, 79-77. to Tom Hammond for Bill Raftery saying so long for Oxford, Mississippi. You've been watching a Jefferson Pilot exclusive.